Hi, good day. So for today, we are going to talk about the Kruskal Wallis H test. The Kruskal Wallis H test is in another way on how we can find the significant difference between three or more groups of data that came from independent samples. Unlike the one-way ANOVA, Kruskal Wallis H test can only be used if our data are not normally distributed, and therefore. Kruskal Wallis H test is a type of non parametric test. Also, because our data here are not normally distributed, then the most appropriate level of measurement that we should use here should be under ordinal scale. To give you an example on how Kruskal Wallis H test works, let's have here an example research entitled Satisfaction Ratings in Assistance During COVID 19 Lockdown. Here, three groups of participants rate their satisfaction on the said matter. The rating scale is from 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest. Our groups here are the lower class, middle class, and upper class, and each group has 5 participants. Therefore, we have 15 participants in total. Now, let's assume that our data are not normally distributed. The next thing that we are going to do is to rank them continuously. That is, we are going to arrange our whole data from lowest to highest. And we can assign ranks to them. Again, in ranking, the lower the number, the lower the rank. And the higher the number, the higher the rank. And so we will have here 1 as first in rank and 10 as 15th in rank. Now, whenever there are ties, we may get the average of their ranks. For example, the ranks 3 and 4 have the same number. And so we can just average those ranks to get rank 3.5. And therefore, both 3 here can be ranked 3.5. Same with ranks 10, 11, and 12 where its average is 11. And so every 7 in our data, every 7 in our data, will have a rank of 11. Next, we can add another columns, column for ranks in low class, column for ranks in middle class, and column for ranks in upper class. From these columns, we are going to plug in all the ranks that we had earlier. For example, in our ranks earlier, 7 in low class has a rank of 11, while 4 in middle class has a rank of 5.5. We are going to do that in all our data. Then, we are going to get the rank sum for each column. For ranks for low, that's 11 plus 9 plus 13 plus 11 plus 7.5 and that is 51.5. For ranks for middle, that's 35. And for ranks for upper class, that's 33.5. The next thing that we are going to do is to determine our null hypothesis, our degrees of freedom, our alpha level or level of significance, our critical value, and our decision rule. For the null hypothesis, our null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference on the satisfaction ratings from lower class, middle class, and upper class or the satisfaction ratings in lower class, middle class, and upper class are just the same. Our degrees of freedom is k minus 1, where k is the number of groups. Again, we have three groups of data here. And therefore, we have here 3 minus 1, and that is 2. Our degrees of freedom is 2. For alpha level or level of significance, our alpha level is 0.05 or 5%. Now, to know the critical value in H test, we are going to use here the chi square critical value table. So, let's take a look at chi square critical value table. This is the critical value table for chi square. Here, we know that our alpha level or level of significance is 0.05 or 5%, and our degrees of freedom is 2. By intersecting the value under 0.05 as the alpha level and the value under 2 degrees of freedom, then, we can say that our critical value for H or H crit is 5.991. Now, after looking at the chi-square critical value table, 
we now know that our critical value is 5.991. For our decision rule, our decision rule here is that if computed H is greater than or equal to critical value for H, which is 5.991, we are going to reject our null hypothesis. Now let's proceed to the computation of the H value. Now this is the formula for us to be able to compute our H value. Our formula is H is equal to 12 over capital letter N multiplied to capital letter N plus 1 multiplied to the summation of RS squared over small letter N minus 3 times capital letter N plus 1 where in our capital letter N here is the total number of samples like uh, for example, earlier, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 total samples, and therefore, our capital letter N in this research is 15. For small letter N, small letter N is the number of samples in a group. Like, for example, in lower class, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 samples in lower class, and therefore, the small letter N in lower class is 5. For RS, RS is the rank sum for each group, and we already determined that earlier. For ranks for low class, that's 51.5. For middle class, that's 35. And for upper class, that's 33.5. Okay? And by plugging in all the data that we had earlier, that we already determined earlier, then we will have here H is equal to 12 over, again, capital letter N here is 15. We have here 15 total samples. 15 multiplied to 15 plus 1 multiplied to our rank sum for the first group which is the lower class is 51.5 so 51.5 squared over the n or the sample size in lower class is 5 okay? and that's 51.5 squared over 5 for a middle class that's again 35 35 squared over again we have here 1 2 3 4 5 5 sample size in middle class so 35 squared over 5 plus for the third group, for the upper class, we have here 33.5 squared over 5 minus 3, 3 times 15, which is actually, again, our total sample size, plus 1. And by simplifying this equation, by doing this in your calculator, then we will have here H is equal to 1.995. Now, for our analysis, our analysis here is that since our computed H value, which is 1.995, is less than our critical H value, which is 5.991, then we are going to end up not rejecting our null hypothesis. Okay, so do not reject null hypothesis. So again, our decision rule is that if our computed H is greater than or equal to critical value for H, then we are going to reject our null hypothesis. Since 1.995, which is our HCOM, or computed H, is uh, less than 5.991, which is the critical value for H, then we are not going to reject our null hypothesis. And therefore, our conclusion here is that there is no significant difference on the satisfaction ratings of low, middle, and upper class. That is how we can use the cross call wallis H test in determining the significant difference of three or more groups of data that came from independent samples and that our data are not normally distributed. Thank you for listening and good day.